Hey everybody, this is Kennedy Hawk from the Marvel Champions Monthly Team. The Wasp Pack is now out in the wild with its official FFG release date of 122. So I've gotten a pack from our local area, and by a local area I mean Team Covenant. I've also got my pack that I imported earlier, I guess in 2020, so that I could play a bunch of Wasp games. So I wanted to go through the different cards that are in the pack, just do a sort of pack overview and review, and then I'll be posting some Wasp gameplay videos in the upcoming weeks. So let's take a look at the pack that it contains the cards for Nadia Van Dyne. So, this is not Wasp Janet Van Dyne from the comics. This is Hank Pym's long-lost daughter, Nadia Van Dyne. She has three recovery, a hand size of six, and 11 hit points. The genius trait and the action girl, which lets you shuffle two cards with a printed mental resource from your discard pile back into your deck. That's really powerful when you're mulliganing with Wasp, because you can throw mental cards away knowing that you're still going to see them on that first deck pass. So we're talking about cards like Nick Fury and things that you might want to see later in the game. You can seed them back into your deck after you've done your mulligans. You can almost guarantee they're not in your opening hand with mental allies, which is really nice. Just like Ant-Man, she has two forms. So we have Tiny Form Wasp. One thwart, one attack, two defense. Small but mighty. After Wasp or an event you play, defeats a minion or side scheme, deal one damage to the villain. That's really good. Um, hand size of five with 11 hit points still, so still a five card hand size, which isn't bad. We've also got Giant Form Wasps. This is one of those unfolding cards. Two thwart, two attack, and three defense. And the cool ability here is the threat and damage you deal with your basic attack powers can be divided among any number of enemies in play. So with just two attack, that's not very exciting. But if you boost her attack to higher levels, it becomes a lot more deadly, right? If you've got seven attack on Wasp by spamming a bunch of leadership events, you can now kill a three health minion and push four onto the villain, as long as the minion didn't have guard. So pretty cool ability. I think the overall idea that I've been playing with Wasp is I use my giant form to spread damage and spread thwart. I flip to tiny form, and I use whatever events and basic abilities I can to defeat all the things, getting all that ping damage to the villain. That damage gets around guard, um, it gets around stunned, if you can deal damage without attacking, and there's a couple ways you can do that, so it's pretty cool. It's not very advantageous with allies, so your allies damaging and killing things when you're in tiny form do not trigger her small but mighty ability. Back to Giant Form, one of the best things about Wasp compared to Ant-Man is she has a hand size of 5 in Giant Form instead of a hand size of 4. So that's a big bonus to be able to get that extra hand size and still have some pretty pumped up stats and a cool ability. So ultimately, Ant-Man, remember if you played him a lot, you wanted to flip forms almost every turn to get that free threat removal or three da free damage. With Wasp, you're a lot more about the long game and efficiency. You want to use her Giant Form to set everything up. Flip the tiny form momentarily to do a bunch of things, and then flip back to giant form where you have high defense and high potency to damage different things. So first, let's look through the 15-card kit that comes with Wasp. Wasp's signature ally is Ant-Man Scott Lang, so you will not be able to play him if you're playing with the Ant-Man hero pack as well. Avengers trait, two thwart, two attack for one consequential damage, and obviously a wild resource. While you are in giant form, Ant-Man is also kind of in giant form and gains plus one attack. While you are in tiny form, Ant-Man is also kind of in tiny form and gains plus one thwart. So while you're in tiny form, Ant-Man can be a four cost nine thwart ally or six thwart in a block. Pretty good. When you're in giant form, he can be a nine damage ally for four cost. At the same time, four cost for nine is not like the, the best in the world. I mean, it's nine over three activations, which is pretty nice. Winter Soldier, right, has a base cost of four for Black Widow. He comes in and does two. I think he's got three or four health. I'd have to check, but he he's a much better signature ally with that cost reduction, right? If something's going to cost four, they need to change the game. Ant-Man's just kind of a beefy ally that, that can get a lot done. That being said, if you're going to hang out in tiny form, Ant-Man can be a great way to set up side schemes to be defeated. Um, and even in giant form, you can use a combination of your spreading damage and Ant-Man's three attack to set up your tiny form small but mighty pings. So... Pretty good ally, like most signature allies are. Um, not quite at the four cost point for me at least. All right, Wasp has two thwart events. They are giant help. 
Thwart, hero action. Remove three threat from a side scheme. Remove four threat divided among side schemes as you choose instead if you are a giant form. So this is sort of going back to her signature ability. It's going to allow you to use a thwart event to spread four thwarting out. So four justice is to just remove four from one scheme. Obviously in solo, a lot of side schemes have two or three threat on them. So it's not always advantageous to remove four from it with four justice. Giant helps a little bit better at that as you can divide the, the threat around. If you're in tiny form, it's not so great, right? It's it's a subpar for justice. Remove three threat from, from a scheme for two cost. Um, and you can't use any power of cards to make it only one cost one card. So it's a little bit behind for justice in tiny form, but ahead of for justice in giant form. So pretty good for a signature card. Where Wasp really shines is damage. So she's got three copies of an event called Pinpoint Strike and three copies of Wasp Sting. So let's just go over those cards. Pinpoint Strike is a three cost attack. Hero action, deals seven damage to an enemy. If you are in tiny form, this attack deals one additional damage to that enemy and gains overkill. So a couple cool things about this. It's basically a hammer toss from Thor for the same cost, but doesn't require your hammer to be in play and doesn't require your hammer to return to your hand incurring future costs to play it again. So that's really cool. That being said, if you're in giant form, you're only going to get 7 damage instead of 8. It also doesn't require you to be attacking a minion. I've seen a lot of people trying to trigger the overkill on this, and that's fine and dandy. Um, if you do trigger the overkill, you're going to kill something while you're in tiny form, so you're going to get to damage the villain 1 extra, so it's kind of like a 9 damage attack with overkill. Um, but you can just throw this straight at the villain's face if there's no minions there. 3 cost for 8, I mean, it's... Good value, right? It's swinging web kick, but for Wasp. And you get three copies. Not only that, but Spider-Man, right? His attacking ends at swinging web kick. He's got a bunch of defense stuff in his package then. Wasp comes with two copies of a two-cost event, Wasp Sting. Hero action attack. If you are in giant hero form, deal a total of four damage among enemies you choose. So again, spreading the damage out to set up all your little small but mighty pings. If you're in tiny form, deal five damage to an enemy. Again, this doesn't require you to attack the a minion with it. So two costs for five damage, that's just an upgraded uppercut, which was you know a low par aspect card. So great. And if we look at these two cards combined, you've got eight, 16, 24, 34 points of damage spread among five cards in Wasp's hero kit. And if you're killing minions with some of those, it's even more damage. So that's a really high ceiling for damage contained within a hero kit. So it's really exciting to see. We've got one more event we'll talk about here. Um, we have two copies of Rapid Growth. This is Wasp's equivalent to Resize, and it is not quite as good as Ant-Man's Zero Cost Change Forms Draw card. Um, so it has the Giant trait, and it is a superpower. Hero Interrupt. When you would use one of your basic powers, Thwart, Attack, or Defense, change to your Giant form and get plus two to that power. So if you are about to Thwart in Tiny Form for one, instead you're going to switch to Giant form and Thwart for four. That's, that's pretty good for one cost. You get the free flip, so you can flip back at the end of the turn, or you can flip down and heal, all sorts of good things. You can play two of these at once, but you're going to have to pay one for it. So you're paying two to gain four to an attack or a thwart or a defense for the turn. Um, ultimately, it's just not quite as good as Ant-Man's, mainly because of the cost. I think if this cost zero, it'd be a great card. But with it costing one, and with resize costing zero and drawing you a card, resize definitely has... The upper edge on rapid growth but rapid growth is still a really fun card you can sit in tiny form and prepare to defend and then decide you know what the villain got some kind of bonus from the player before me i need to switch to giant form get that extra defense and get plus two on top of it to make sure i can absorb a charge or whatever happens so those are wasps events we've got two copies of pin particles it's exactly the same as ant-man's pin particles all the way down to the art so after you spend this card heal two damage to your hero if you're in giant form or draw one card if you were in tiny form 90 percent of the time i use this to draw a card i just i'm not taking a lot of attacks i'm trying to kill all the things that i can um, and then chump with an ally so it's an okay resource only providing one resource makes it kind of a bummer unless you're in tiny form to draw that extra card all right, three upgrades to go through as well. So we have Red Room Training. It is a skill. While you're in giant form, you gain Retaliate 1, so another good reason to use Rapid Growth to jump to giant form. While you're in tiny form, your basic attacks gain Piercing. So this is really cool, because if you get a minion down to one health or something like that, Wasp is able to basic attack, remove the tough, and hit the villain, which 
can be very beneficial or remove the tough and kill tiger shark or whoever has that tough status that being said i almost wish these were flip-flops you'll see why in a minute i wish in tiny form you got retaliate and in giant form you got piercing might not have made sense mechanically but uh Piercing would be a lot more useful when you can spread your damage around and things like that. So maybe it would have been too powerful then, but still a pretty good upgrade for a hero card. Biosynthetic Wings. These are unique for some reason in case you were ever able to play two. This is a tech upgrade, so it can be discarded by things like Yellow Jacket and stuff like that. Um, interrupt. When you would take any amount of damage, if you were in tiny form, exhaust biosynthetic wings to prevent one of that damage. What this does is it basically makes your tiny form as good as your giant form in defending, right? You've got three defense if you defend here. If you're in tiny form, you can defend and get two prevention and then prevent one with, where is it, biosynthetic wings. You are exhausting them, so you couldn't do that for multiple attacks or whatnot. You can also do this just to prevent any kind of damage. So damage from under attack, damage from Green Goblin, all sorts of things that you couldn't with a normal defense card. Um, it's also something you could do where if you're in Wasp form and you think you're only going to take two damage, maybe you just don't defend and you use this to reduce it by one and save your activation. So really good card, but really encourages you to be in tiny form, which is good because ultimately giant form is just so good with its stats and hand size that you have to justify jumping down to tiny. Finally, Wasp's Helmet. Maybe here's another reason to justify jumping to Tiny. While you're in Giant form, you gain plus one thwart. Great. Three base thwart that you can spread wherever you want. Definitely awesome. While you're in Tiny form, you get plus one attack. So now you've got two attack. If you've also got Red Room training out, you've got a two attack piercing just as your basic attack. That's really powerful going up against tough minions like things in Claw's deck and Kang's deck. So pretty good tight signature kit. It's all going to be about being in the right form at the right time and efficiency. You don't want to waste a single point of damage. You want to be using your wasp stings in giant form to spread damage, flipping to giant form, pinpoint strike now since it has overkill, doesn't waste any damage, and you get that bonus damage from pinging. If you have some events from the aspect that maybe spread damage across multiple enemies, you could use that in wasp's tiny form to get several small but mighty triggers in a turn, and that's the key to optimizing her sort of build. So let's look at the other cards included in her pack. I'm not just going to go through her deck, but her pack in general. First, I'm going to look at the basic cards. Um, and there's a couple reprints here in basic land. Oops, I brought multiple copies of one of these cards. Sorry about that. I think I just copied that whole stack twice. Yeah, okay. Let me delete those. Gone. So... Basic cards. We've got our three basic resources. Wasp's deck is very, or her kit, or her pack is very resource heavy. You've got your three basics. You've got your two pin particles. Later we'll talk about it, but you're going to have two power of aggression as well. So you are just loaded with resources. You've got a Quinn Carrier. Finally, we get a Quinn Carrier reprint. We haven't seen it since Black Widow, and we've really wanted a second one. So it's really nice to not have to go buy two Black Widow packs to get a second Quinn Carrier. Um, provides a resource of whatever type you want. I think it's mainly in here because she's able to shuffle it back into her deck, right? She can discard it or spend it as a resource and send it back in, in her alter ego form, which can be really helpful if you can't afford the Quinn Carrier right away. Last reprint, um, we've got one copy of Swarm Tactics from Ant-Man's Pack. Makes sense. It was a one of an Ant-Man's Pack. You definitely want to have it in Nadia's Pack. And again, this is another card that Girl can shuffle back into the deck. Um, looking at the cards in Wasp's kit, those 34 damage worth of events, those are all mental resources. So you're going to be able to recur those a ton of times as you're playing Wasp and really just use her signature cards to pump out damage. All right, continuing on with basic cards. We've got a new card, a resource, the power in all of us. So not only are we at seven resources from the ones I mentioned, we are now at nine resources in Nadia's pack. Power of all of us is basically a power of card, but for basic cards. So this is going to make... A card that was worth two resources for Nick Fury, for Mockingbird, for Avengers Mansion, for all those staples that you want in every deck, this card is amazing. I still tend to want to have seven to eight basic cards that cost three plus to put this into my deck. If you include Lockjaw, I change that a little bit because Lockjaw can be played from the discard pile. So this almost always acts as a double trigger until Lockjaw is in play or shuffled back into your deck. So that's pretty nice. Um, but still just a great card, especially if you want to include some of those basics. We've got Ironheart, a new basic ally, one thwart, one attack. I consider her to be the mini Nick Fury, 
a Nick Fury you can probably afford all the time. Again, mental resource, Nadia can shuffle her back in, and the champion's trait to work with Miss Marvel. Like I said, one thwart, one attack, two hit points. With a response, after you play Ironheart from hand, draw one card. So none of that leadership shenanigans with rapid response like Maria Hill and things like that. I mean, she's a generic Maria Hill that everyone can run, but only works for you and can't be gamed like with Make the Call and Rapid Response. So not quite as good as Maria Hill, but still really good for a basic ally, especially one that Nadia can shuffle back in. We've got Spider-Man, Miles Morales, another champion. One thwart, two attack, three hit points. After you play Spider-Man from hand, choose thwart or attack. Spider-Man gets plus two to the chosen power until the end of the vase. So for three cost, you could do... 6 damage plus a block, or you could do 4 thwart plus a block, all without having any other cards to combo with. If you're playing this in leadership and you have Get Ready or Inspiring Presence, you can add that plus 2 to the attack, and Miles just becomes a powerhouse that you can combo around. So, really cool ability. Again, it's after you play from hand. We're seeing that as a constant phrasing now, probably because of all the shenanigans that has existed with Rapid Response and Make the Call. All right, we've got one more basic card to go over. Athletic Conditioning. Hero action. Discard one stun or confuse status card from your hero. This card is pretty cool. It's definitely a savior for um, She-Hulk and Thor and Hulk and people that really suffer when they get hit with stun. Um, probably people that suffer when they get hit with confuse as well. The problem with it is it's an event, so you've got to draw it at the right time. Otherwise, you're just better off clearing stun or attack. I mean, if we're looking at... Clearing, um, stun, or confused. You could just bring a haymaker in your deck. Yeah, it costs one more, but it works to clear stunned. And if you ever aren't stunned and you draw it in your hand, it's at least not useless, right? So if this could discard from any hero, it might be a little bit better in multiplayer. Um, I sort of wish this was an upgrade or a preparation, right? Conditioning is something you do ahead of time, and then you use it when it's needed, right? If I'm not conditioning ahead of time, I'm not going to be able to condition on the fly when the wrecker is smashing me with a wrecking ball. So doesn't feel like it matches the name very well um, and ultimately it would be a lot more powerful as an upgrade that being said it still has a place in some decks that are really susceptible to being attacked and getting stunned or being attacked and getting confused all right wasp comes packaged with aggression so let's look through there are six new aggression cards to talk about we've got two allies we have wasp janet van dyne so these two wasps can be in play at the same time she can also trigger the team up card for ant-man so that'll be a little bit more consistent Wasp gets one hit point for each pim counter on her. Well, how do we get pim counters? When Wasp enters play, place one pim counter on her to a maximum of three for each energy resource you overpaid for Wasp's cost. So at maximum, you'd want to pay three. You can use power of aggression to count as two energy resources to pump this, so that's kind of nice. And ultimately, if you can get her to three hit points, she can do nine damage over three turns. Not too bad for three costs, right? I mean... Ant-Man's going to cost four for the same thing only if you're in giant form, and he's a signature ally, so obviously she's pretty good. The requiring energy resource is a, li is a little strange. Like, Ant-Man is the leadership version of this, and he has two thwart and two attack, and he can have up to four counters, and any energy type, or any resource type, gives him a counter. So it's, it's a little strange that she's so far, you know, behind Ant-Man's curve in that sense. But still a potent, powerful ally, and it's always nice to have cheap allies. Ultimately, you can pay one Lightning Bolt, get Wasp into play, she chump blocks for you, and that's worth it right there. All right. Other ally, Thor Jane Foster. One thwart, two attack. The Asgard Avenger trait with four health. Response, after you play Thor from hand, deal two damage to the villain, or three instead if this card had a fist resource. So this can be a nice game finisher. It gets around guard, gets around stunned, things like that. Um, Thor is a pretty efficient ally for four costs. You can do eight damage over four turns, or six damage in a block. If you find a way to buff her, she becomes just as good as Ant-Man, who's a signature ally. Um, so that's really, really good. Um, I've seen one constant question by a lot of people about Mjolnir in Thor's kit because Mjolnir says Thor gets plus one attack. It's been ruled that upgrades you play are like attached to your hero unless specified otherwise. So when you play Mjolnir, it's considered attached to your main hero Thor card. It's not going to provide ally Thor with a with a boost, even though that would be really cool theme-wise. Not the case. Um, solid ally. Four cost is a pretty competitive slot for um, almost all aspects, right? 
paying four means you're almost playing your entire hand to play this ally. And she, she sort of suits the bill. I mean, you can get three thwart out of her, which isn't bad in aggression. I mean, she's no brawn, but she's also still a really good ally. Lightning resource works with forest kit, works well with wasp to power her ability. All right, on to some more cards. Let's look at boot camp next. This is some ally support for aggression, which aggression desperately needed to go along with enraged. Location, play under any player's control, max one per player. So this is kind of your team training for aggression. Each ally you control gets plus one attack. That's really good. So now Wasp is sitting at four attack. If you put three resources into her, she's doing 12 damage. That outperforms Ant-Man at a cheaper cost. I guess he would get the plus one attack as well. Um, Thor, same thing. You can get 12 damage out of her over four turns, plus the three to the villain if you used a physical resource. That's one thing to say about these allies is they're very, like... They're, they're, they have an identity crisis, right? Wasp wants energy resources, but she's a mental resource. Thor is a lightning resource, but she wants physical resources in your deck. There's not like a, a consistent theme to those aggression allies and what resource types you want, especially given that Hulk ally is like the ultimate, I want to be consistent with my resources ally, and it's in this aspect. But either way, boot camp, a welcome addition to aggression. Welcome for anyone that teams an aggression player with a leadership player. This can make allies super, super potent. Um, it is a bit expensive, but I think it's worth it, right? If you have three allies in play, you're doing a three-cost card to do three damage that turn and additional damage the rest of the game. Really, really good. For people that use allies to thwart, maybe not so great. Um, and this might actually encourage you to use your allies to, you know, seal the game instead of using allies as chump blockers constantly. We've got Surprise Attack. After you change form, deal 3 damage to an enemy, 4 damage instead if you used a Fist resource. So again, we've got this weird identity crisis going on with uh, with resource types. Surprise Attack is a really, really good card. It's going to be great with heroes that change form a lot. With Miss Marvel, you can change forms, play Surprise Attack, exhaust Miss Marvel to return it to your hand, and play it again. Or if you're short on resources, it has a fist symbol, so you can respond to your surprise attack still and trigger Yarnbjorn. So there's a ton of really cool things you can do with surprise attack. I actually really like this with She-Hulk, because She-Hulk is very susceptible to stun. I like to use this for when I flip to hero form, clearing my stun before I want to trigger a bunch of one-two punches in a row. So a lot of really great uses. Really good with, like I said, Miss Marvel. Really good with She-Hulk, really good with Ant-Man and Wasp. I think really good with Captain America in a sort of leadership allies build. You put out a bunch of allies, get a boot camp out, and then with your super soldier serums, every time you flip, you get that discount for an ally, you flip back, you deal four damage. Really, really good, really, really good combo. All right, next is Lion Wait. It is finally a new preparation to add to Black Widow's arsenal. Max one per player. After a minion engages you, discard Lion Wait, deal three damage to that minion. This is actually a really, really cool card. So it works obviously well with Black Widow. Works great with Thor, because you're going to use Defender of the Nine Realms, so you know you're gonna pull out minions. Now you can deal three damage to them as they come out, hammer toss into them with overkill. Bingo bango, awesome card combo. I actually really, really like this with Wasp as well, right? Because you want those allies to be fairly low in health, so you can damage them with Lion Weight and get them really low. Works well with the aggression card from Ant-Man's pack, Moment of Triumph. If a, a, a minion comes out, you can deal three damage to it, get it to low health so that you can use Moment of Triumph to heal to full health. Really, really cool card. Really cheap. Good resource type for the characters it works with. Perfect. And then finally, one of my favorite cards from this kit is Into the Fray. We've seen that this card is also coming in the Galaxy's Most Wanted um, campaign expansion that's coming up. It is an attack action that removes threat. You know right there that that's going to be good, because you can remove threat when confused. That is a huge deal. Hero action, attack. Deal 6 damage to a minion. For each point of excess damage dealt by this attack, remove 1 threat from the main scheme. So it only hits the main scheme. You're not going to be able to do it if there's a crisis icon out, so there's one little disadvantage to it. But it's really strong. Like, aggression struggles with threat. So you can now imagine playing against Ultron where you struggle with threat. You throw this into a drone... It's basically kill a drone and deal a bunch of damage. Pretty good. You'll get to ping if you're playing as Wasp. I mean, everything about this card is good. It can combo, again, with Moment of Triumph. Um, you can, you know, kill that Ultron drone that has one health, 
heal for five and remove five threat from the main scheme. So you've basically reset the entire board state for you and done damage to the villain or done damage to the villain's minions. Really, really awesome. It does require minions to be in play. Again, a great card to go with Thor. That's why I think Thor is in the picture um, featured. She-Hulk's in there too. Not so great with She-Hulk, but really, really good with Thor. Um, his ability to bring minions out so this can be consistent. Like, imagine the hypothetical world where you play Defender of the Nine Realms, remove three threat from a scheme, and find a minion. Maybe that minion has four health. Oh, look, you had a Lion Wait out, so you deal three damage to it. And you draw two cards, because you're Thor. So this minion's now at one health. What are we going to do? Oh, we're going to into the fray it. Deal six damage to it. All the excess damage removes more threat from the scheme. So you now have eight threat removal in this combo. And if you have Moment of Triumph, you can also heal for five. That's just like the amazing combo that Aggression has just been waiting to have. So I'm a big fan of this pack. I think Wasp is a strong character. She's very nuanced. She requires a lot more forethought and planning with your play. But even if you don't like Wasp as a character, these six aggression cards blow the aspect up in a completely new way and make it available to all sorts of combos that weren't there before. Just those six cards are worth it. But we get more bonus cards. So we get Perseverance for protection. Hero response after you change forms, give your hero a tough status. Again, these form-changing heroes love this. So Wasp, Ant-Man, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk... All those tough statuses for one cost are amazing. I mean, the basic card that does a tough status costs three. So this is two cheaper than that. It does require you to be changing forms. But a lot of times you want to change forms and get those, those that hand draw anyway. So, I mean, I think that this is a great card. It's a card I am never sad to see. I think it works really well with Brother Voodoo um, in Captain America Protection. So you play uh, Brother Voodoo in Alter Ego form. Cost one less. You get to look at the top five cards of your deck and put one into your hand. Usually that's kind of lame, right? Because you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get counter punches and I'm going to get things to use in the hero phase. Well, you were going to get those cards anyway when you drew your next hand. With this, you get a card from protection that you can use that turn, and that's really, really powerful. Next, we'll do running interference. Play only if your identity has the Avengers trait. So a little bit limited, a little bit tribal here. Hero action thwart. Remove two threat from the main scheme. Remove X additional threat from the main scheme, where X is equal to the villain's stage number. So this could be better than For Justice, but only for the main scheme. It could also be worse than For Justice if you're playing in um, standard against the first stage of a villain. Again, it has that to a maximum of three, um, sort of like Muster Courage did for leadership. So maybe that's hinting that there's going to be villains with four stages in the future. Maybe it's not. Only time will tell. But either way, two costs, remove five threat at the time you probably need it when you're in expert mode against the stage three villain. Um, ultimately, I don't think this replaces For Justice in any of my decks. I still think For Justice and Laid on the Law and things like that are usually better, but still a cool um, card to play, and actually shares a title with a card from the Tombstone modular set. Finally, the last card, and probably the one I was the most excited about that I am now the least excited about, a two-cost all-for-one. It's finally an attack in the leadership aspect. Miss Marvel has been waiting. Deal 3 damage to an enemy, exhaust any number of Avenger characters you control, deal 1 additional damage to that enemy for each character exhausted this way. So it's kind of cool, right? You can get the 6 Avengers characters out there now, so this could be a 2 cost, deal 9 damage attack. Um, and you can even exhaust your hero, so you could make it a 2 cost, deal 10 damage attack. With Miss Marvel, you could embiggen it to make it a 12 damage attack if you somehow made her an Avenger with Honorary Avenger. That's all like magical Christmas land, right? I mean, if you have six allies out there and you have the option to play strength and numbers or all for one, you'd probably rather play strength and numbers and draw six cards. Or you'd rather play lead from the front and attack with all those allies for even more damage, right? If all those allies have an attack of one and you play lead from the front, that's now a two cost card that does 12 damage. Yes, all your allies will take a consequential damage, but usually with allies, you want to get them down to that one hit point threshold and then use them to chump. So this has a place in those decks that want to use Strength and Numbers and want to use Earth's Mightiest Heroes and keep their allies alive as sort of batteries. Um, this is another card like Teamwork that acts as a battery, but ultimately it hasn't had like a real great place in the meta yet. I'm excited to see a day when maybe it does. So some Avengers tribal stuff in Leadership and Justice and a really, really good standout protection card 
arts, ability, cost, everything about this protection card is great. So I'm excited beyond belief for Perseverance from the off aspect cards. So that is the Wasp pack. I'm not gonna go through her obligation and nemesis sets. Um, in the videos that I'll be posting, you'll see I drew shadows of the past more than enough for you to experience the obligation and nemesis sets from Wasp. I definitely recommend you talk to your local retailer or to hop on as Modi Direct and pick up this pack. Like I said, even if you're not a big fan of the character Wasp or you don't like how her signature kit works out, feel like she's just not as good as Ant-Man and you'd rather play him, you're getting so many new tools in the other 45 cards of this deck that you're going to definitely want to pick up this pack because there are staples that are going to be used, in my guess, for the entire year to come before we get things that might make these not as exciting to us. So that was Wasp. In a couple of weeks, I'll do another one of these videos overviewing Quicksilver when he comes out because I've gotten my shipping notification for him as well. It looks like he's coming out hopefully on February 5th. Thanks for checking out this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it.